In the last video, we made an R package called GeoHash in which we could take a longitude and latitude and create a GeoHash string from that. We were also able to take that GeoHash string and convert it back into a longitude and latitude with some error. In this video, we're gonna go over how we can take the decode bbox function and create an SF bbox object directly from Extender. So through this, we'll learn how to create S3 objects in Extender. With that, let's dive right on in. Our objective is to make something like this available in R, where we take this hash string and then return, instead of a rectangle, an SF bbox. So let's go look at what a bbox actually is. Now we're inside of R Studio, and before we can dive into this, we have to understand what a bounding box is in the SF package. So let's load SF and read in the NC object. Each SF object has a bounding box associated with it, which tells us the extent it covers. The way to get it is at the stbbox function. And let's save this to an object called bbox. When we look at the structure of this bounding box, we can see that it's a named numeric vector. However, it has this other attribute called CRS, which contains the coordinate reference system for that bounding box. So inside of extender, I know that we can create a named vector. However, adding a CRS is a little bit more tricky. What we can do though, is we can pass in a CRS object into our extender function and add that as an attribute. What we'll do now is we'll go back to Rust, Inside of VS Code, let's create a function called decode dbox. And for now, let's have it take one argument called geohash and it'll be a string slice. For the time being, we'll just print the results to the console. So what we'll do is we'll say geohash colon colon decode dbox, and then it needs a hash string. So we'll just pass in our geohash object and we'll say let hash equals. And then we'll just print the results to the console. And in order for this to become available to R, we need to add the extender attribute macro and then pass it into our extender module, decode bbox. Now let's go back to our studio and let's run our extender document. In order to use this decode bbox function, we need to have an actual geohash to work with. So let's encode a single geohash here. Let's provide some random coordinates. Let's say negative 122 and 32 with a geohash length of 10. So let's call this geohash. Let's pass it into our decode bbox function. Now we can see the results here. We have a rectangle with a minimum field, which is a coordinate, and a maximum field, which is also a coordinate. So what we need to do now is be able to take this result and turn it into a numeric vector. So for the time being, we're gonna unwrap this result and not worry about any NAs. So this rectangle called hash, has a min method, which returns a chord. And this chord also has a method called xy, which will return a tuple of the x and y coordinates. So we can say let x min y min equal this. And this is gonna destructure that coordinate into these individual values. And now we can copy this line and do the same thing for max. And instead of x min, it needs to be x max and y max. So this is gonna create these objects, but now what we need to do is create a doubles vector. So we'll say doubles from values, and let's just create an array of the values we want. So x min, y min, x max, and y max. So what we'll do is we'll have this function return a doubles vector. We'll run our cargo check and see that everything works, and it does. So now returning back to our studio, we'll run our extender document again, because now that we have a return type, the type has changed. We'll encode our geohash, and let's decode our bbox. And that looks great. We have the numeric values we need, but they're missing the names. So what we can do is let's call this res for result. So in order to add attributes to an object in extender, we need to turn it into an R object. So we'll say res into our object, and then we can use the set names method. And here we'll provide a reference to an array and we'll say x min, y min, x max, and y max. This is gonna return a result that we need to unwrap. Now let's save this and do cargo check. We'll notice that this is actually expecting a doubles because that's the type we said it was, but now it found an R object. To fix this, we'll change doubles into R O B J, cargo check, and everything looks good. So back into our studio we go. Now we're getting a lot closer, but this actually is an SF bbox object. So what we can do here is we need to pass in a CRS. And I know that if we do SF STCRS 4326, this is gonna give us the SF object that we need. So let's assign this to CRS. And going back into VS Code, let's add another argument here that says CRS. And this is gonna be an R object. And with this, we can set the attribute CRS to be the value of CRS. And now we can unwrap this. 
Now we run cargo check and it looks fine. Now that we've documented this function and we try running decode bbox, it's gonna be missing that CRS object. So let's move this down below CRS and then add the CRS to our call. Now this is getting a lot better and we have the attribute CRS, but what we're missing is the class itself. So the way we can do that is run set class and then we'll call this bbox and we need to unwrap the result again. This is telling us that it needs to be iteratable and what we can do here is do the same thing we did with the set names and put it inside a, a reference to an array. So now if we try running everything again, we'll see that we actually see an x min, y min, x max, and y max and the CRS isn't printed. Now that's telling me that this is being seen as a real bbox object or at least being printed like it. The way to check is let's assign this to an object called bbox and then see if we can convert this to a polygon and we can't and that's perfect that's what we want so let's see if we can plot it amazing we have a rectangle that's exactly what a bounding box is so now we've actually been able to create a real sf object from rust so going back into rust how can we go about taking this and making it vectorize what we can do is we can think about making a simple function that will take a rec and create this object that we want let's create a helper function down here called rect to bbox. This function is going to take an argument, which is a rect, and then another argument called crs, which will be a reference to an R object, and it's going to return an R object. Now, what we can do here is we can just take this section of code and simplify it. Instead of hash, it's called x, and this is going to give us the same thing that we need, and then we'll just copy this all down here, paste it, one thing to think about though is that this CRS needs to be cloned because we're taking a reference and we need to make it owned. Rect is not found in this scope. Well, that makes sense. So let's go up to here and add this rect object as an import. So let's go inside of here, delete everything, rect to bbox. We'll call this hash here. What we'll have to store the results into is going to be a list where each element is a single bbox object. And lists don't have a concept of NA. So in the case that we do encounter something, the NA equivalent for a list is gonna be a null object. So to start doing this, let's change this string slice to be strings, and then let's start iterating over strings. So geohash into iter, then we'll map it, and I'll call this ghi for the ith geohash. And then we're gonna run this geohash decode bbox function on it, and then this ghi is an rstr. So what we need to do is use this as str method inside of it. Now let's call this let hash equals, and this is gonna be a rect, but we wanna be able to handle the NAs in this case. And if the hash is okay, we'll run rect to bbox on it. And if there's an error, we'll return a null as an R object. Now this is handle the NAs for us, and then we can collect all of this into a list and we're missing something. The result is expected to be an R obj, but now I'm collecting to a list, so we need to change the return type. Perfect, everything compiles. So let's go back into our studio and do the same thing we always do. Let's see what happens. So now the result is a list of bounding boxes. So what happens if we re replicate this geohash 10 times? Now we get 10 instances of this. Well, what happens if we combine this geohash with an NA value? So here we can see that the first element of this is a null object, which is exactly what we want. Let's encode a bunch of geohashes by using random values. So let's sample a bunch of X values from, let's do 100, and the minimum for longitude is negative 180, and the maximum is 180, and for latitude, it's gonna be negative 90 to 90. And let's encode these. So X, Y, and let's do six. Call those geohashes. Now if we print this out, we got a bunch of geohashes. Let's try decoding these. We're missing the CRS, which is okay. And here we go. Now we have a list of all of the different B boxes. And if we're feeling crazy, per map with SF, SC as SF, C, we can now combine all of these by using the unlist function and say recursive equals false. Then if we use SF, ST, SFC, this is gonna create a new SFC object for us. And we're gonna say CRS equals 4326. And now we have a bunch of these. So let's see what happens when we plot it. Now we got all these tiny little bounding boxes across the world. They're too small to see. 
and let's just be crazy and say two. And now we can see these massive little boxes all across the globe. Now with that, we've created a function that will decode geohashes into an SF object bounding box. So what we can do with Rust is we can use the R class system to create S3 objects from other packages. That will let us be able to write really fast R code that can integrate with other packages. If you made it this far, thank you for listening and I hope you've learned something.